Hello, in this video, we are going to talk about quadratic functions in vertex form. And so the first thing we want to look at is what is a quadratic function? We talked about this in a previous video, but just to recall, a quadratic function is a function of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. What makes it quadratic? The highest exponent being 2. Alrighty, so this is a quadratic function, and this form right here is called the general form. So this is the general form, or sometimes you may hear it called standard form of a quadratic function. And so what we're going to be looking at in this video is a quadratic function in vertex form. And so the vertex form looks like this, a times x minus h squared plus k. And that's just taking this function and rewriting it in this format. And so there's a few things that we like about the vertex form and that's first of all because we can look at the function in this form and tell what the vertex of the parabola or the quadratic is and so the vertex so again this is the vertex form and the vertex is the point h comma k so h represents the x coordinate of the vertex and k represents the y coordinate of the vertex. Okay, so what exactly is the vertex? So when you graph a quadratic function, the graph is a parabola, a parabola that either goes this way, which opens up, or a parabola that goes this way, which opens what we call down. And the way it opens is the way the arrows are pointing. So the arrows are pointing up, so this is a parabola that opens up. The arrows are pointing down, so this is a parabola that opens down. Okay, so I see that my um, parabola is a little wobbly, but just imagine in your mind that that's a nice shaped parabola, okay? So the vertex is actually the lowest point if it opens downward. So this will be your vertex, h comma k. And if it opens, if it opens upward, I'm sorry. And if it opens downward, then the vertex is the highest point, h comma k. So if it opens upward, then we call the y value of the vertex the minimum. So k would be a minimum. And if it opens downward, then that highest point would be a maximum. I'll just write max, and that's your k value, okay? So the y value is either the minimum or the maximum value. So minimum if it opens up, it's a maximum if it opens down. Another thing we could tell from the vertex form, even from the general form as well, you can look at it and see um, which way the parabola opens by the value of the a. If the a is positive, bigger than zero, positive, then it's, your parabola is going to open upward. If the a is negative, less than zero, then your parabola is going to open downward. And so these are a few things that we like about the vertex form. Also, Parabolas are symmetric, and symmetric means you can draw a line down the middle, and you get the same thing on both sides. And so, since parabolas are symmetric, there's also going to be a line of symmetry. That line of symmetry is going to go right through the vertex. So that line of symmetry, your axis, we call it the axis of symmetry. Um, the axis of symmetry, I'll write it right here. is defined by the line x equal to h because the vertical line is of the form x equal and it's going to be the x value of the vertex which is h that is an h all right so it's the whole equation x equal h it's not just h it's the equation x equal to h that defines your axis of symmetry and so uh this is what we like about the vertex form we can look at it and tell what the vertex is so the coordinates of the vertex we can look at this and tell which way it opens, which you can also look at it in general form and tell which way it opens as well, because those A's are the same. And then we can tell what the axis of symmetry is, and we can see if there's a minimum or a maximum, okay? So now let's work some examples on this, okay? Okay, for this example, we are given a function in vertex form, f of x equal negative 2 times x minus 1 squared plus 8 remember the square makes it quadratic and so we want to find eight things so this problem is broken up into eight different parts and so these are the eight things we want to find and I'm going to go through them one at a time okay so for the first thing we want to determine if this parabola opens up or if it opens down and so what we do is we look at the value of a well what is a in this case a is equal to 
negative 2. So since a equals negative 2, then that means this parabola will open downward. Okay, pretty simple for that part. All right, that's part A. Part B, for part B, we want to identify the vertex. Since this is of the form f of x equal a times x minus h squared plus k, because it's in vertex form, then you can easily look at this and see what your h and your k is. So h is inside the parentheses with the x, so your h will be 1. And anytime it's in parentheses, it's going to be the exact opposite of what's inside the parentheses. So that says minus 1 in parentheses, so your h would actually be 1. Anytime it's outside of the parentheses, you take it for face value. So your k will be 8. And so therefore, your vertex, since it is the point h comma k, is the point 1, 8. So your vertex is 1, 8. So from part A, we found out that it opens down. Part B, now we know that the vertex is 1, 8. For part C, we want to find the x-intercepts of the graphs. And if you remember from a previous video on how to find the x and y-intercepts, you let the opposite variable equal 0. So if you want to find the x-intercepts, you let y equal 0. And so remember that f of x is equal to y. So we replace f of x with 0, and we solve for x. So that means get x by itself. So that means we need to get rid of this 8 and this negative 2. We'll get rid of the 8 first by subtracting 8 from both sides. So you get negative 8 is equal to negative 2 times x minus 1 squared. Then divide both sides by negative 2. You get 4 is equal to x minus 1 squared. We, gotta, we have to get rid of that square. So in order to get rid of a square, you square root both sides. And any time you take the square root of both sides, you take the positive and negative square root. And so this ends up being positive and negative 2 equal to x minus 1. Then we'll add 1 to both sides to get x by itself. And so you get x is equal to 1 plus or minus 2. And so that ends up giving you two separate answers. So x is equal to 1 plus 2 and x is equal to 1 minus 2. So you 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So your x-intercepts are 3 and negative 1, um, which, is, which are the points 3 comma 0 and negative 1 comma 0. And so that's how you find your x-intercepts. You let, you let the y value equal 0 and solve for x. For part D, we want to find the y-intercept. And if you want to find the y-intercept, now you let x equal 0. So we'll replace x, so f of x is y, remember. We'll replace x with 0, and then we'll solve for y. So you have to do your parentheses first. I always have to use your order of operations. So 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is a positive 1. So that's negative 2 times a positive 1 plus 8. Negative 2 times 1 is a negative 2. Negative 2 plus 8 is 6. So your y-intercept is 6, which is the same as the point 0, 6. So that's how you will find your y-intercept, by letting x equal 0. We're going to use what we found in parts a through d to sketch the graph. So the first thing we figured out was that the graph opens downward. So we know when we sketch the parabola, it's going to go down. Also, we found out that the vertex was the point 1, 8. So 1, 8 is here. So here's our vertex at the point 1, 8. We also found that our x-intercepts were 3 and negative 1. So 3 here and negative 1 here. That's where our graph crosses the x-axis. We found out that our y-intercept was 6. So 6 is here. And because this the parabola is symmetric, there's an axis of symmetry that goes through the coordinates of the vertex. Since this is an axis of symmetry, my line is off a little bit. Since this is an axis of symmetry, that means whatever's on one side will also be on the other side of that line. So since this point is here, 1 over, then that, if I go over 1 here, I'm going to have that same exact point. So at 2, comma 6. So 0, 6 was a point, and because parabolas are symmetric, I'll have another point at 2, 6. So, I can now sketch a parabola through my points. And forgive my, um, forgive my not perfect parabola. 
But you get the point, right? I have my x-intercepts plotted. I have my y-intercept plotted. I have my vertex plotted. And I also found another point because the parabola is symmetric based off of that y-intercept. And so this is how you would sketch the parabola. So for part f, we want to find what is the axis of symmetry. We know that the axis of symmetry is an equation of the form x equal because it's a vertical line. Um, and it goes through the x value of the vertex. The vertex is 1, 8. The x value is 1. So your axis of symmetry would be the equation x equal to 1. For g, we want to determine the maximum or the minimum. Since it opens downward, this graph actually has a maximum. The maximum is the y value. So don't forget, it's the y value of the vertex. So your maximum would be 8. So the maximum is 8. That is the biggest value on that graph, the biggest y value on that graph. Part H, we want to write the domain and range of this graph. So for the domain, we want to ask ourselves, what is the smallest x value on this graph? Well, it looks like the smallest x value is here, but this graph continues to go down. And the further it goes down, the wider it gets. So that means this graph will continue to get wider and wider and wider and wider in both directions. And for that reason, your domain will be negative infinity to positive infinity. And for the range, what is the smallest y value on this graph? Well, the smallest y value, because of the arrows, would be negative infinity, which isn't actually a value. That just means it keeps going and going and going. What is the biggest y value on this graph? Well, the graph stops here in the y direction, which is at the point 8. So it'll be negative infinity to 8. And since that is a point on the graph, you'll include that in brackets. And so this is how you um, look at a quadratic function in vertex form and you break it down you find the vertex you find the x-intercepts the y-intercepts the axis of symmetry find the domain and range how you sketch the graph of it um, the vertex form of the quadratic formula or the quadratic function gives us a lot of information and so that's one of the forms that we like and so if you feel like you're comfortable with this information, then I recommend that you watch the next video, which is how do you take a quadratic function from general form to vertex form. So check out that video and the link is included in the, in the description below. If you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments below. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button.